OK, what is a zero? What is a zero? What the heck is a zero? OK. Here's what a zero is. You've got a function. F of X. Don't have to call it F of X, but that's just what the normal term is. F of X. Equals zero. The number that makes F of X equals zero. Is what a zero is. So we're going to use substitution to determine whether two is a zero of the following. And here's the following right here. F of X equals X to the third minus 12 X squared plus 17 X plus six. Will, will X equals two make this equal zero? I don't know. We're going to use our trusty calculator. And trusty pencils or pins and figure this out. Two to the third minus 12 times two squared plus 17 times two plus six equals. Now, if I get a zero there, it means that two is a zero of f of x. And if I get any number other than zero, then two is not a zero of f of x. So let's see, two cubed minus 12 times two squared plus 17 times 2 plus 6. Let me pull out the big deal. There it is. This is what I typed. Let's make sure it matches. <clears throat> 2 to the third power, 2 cubed, minus 12 times 2 squared, plus 17 times 2, plus 6. Enter. Yeah, how about that? All right, that means that two is a zero. And so I believe uh, in my math lab, you've got a, you know, a yes box and a no box and you're going to check one of them. Two is a zero of f of x. Now if, let me add this, that two is a zero so two comma zero is one of the x-intercepts. Pretty cool. Okay, now. <clears throat> find the zeros. Here we have f of x equals parentheses, um, x plus five, parentheses closed, squared, times parentheses x minus one, parentheses closed. That's what f of x equals. And we're being asked to find the zeros of this polynomial function and state the multiplicity of each. Well, OK, we're going to do that. This is X plus five. Times X plus five. Times X minus one. We have to solve this for zero in order to find the zeros. 
So X plus five equals zero. X plus five equals zero. X minus one equals zero. So we're going to solve each of these little equations for X. I'll subtract five from both sides. So that I have X equals negative five. And since this X plus five equals zero is the exact same thing, I'll have X minus X equals negative five. And over here at X minus one equals zero, I will add one, add one, so that X equals positive one. Okay, the zeros of F of X, I'm just gonna say the zeros. I'm gonna list them. We have negative five, and positive one. We're also going to list the multiplicities of each. Multiplicity, let me finish writing it. Multiplicity means how many times does that zero occur? Well, X minus five, X minus five, negative five occurs two times. X equals one occurs only once. So the multiplicity of negative five is two. And the multiplicity of, of one is one. That's what multiplicity is. And we're going to get to do it again. Let me make sure that we're not going to do anything else. Yes, yeah, same, same instructions. Find the zeros of the polynomial function and state the multiplicity of each. Well, I'm going to do something that's a little silly. And then we'll talk about a shortcut. OK, so to get f of x equals zero, what that means is we're going to have x times x times x times x times x, one, two, three, four, five, times x times x times x minus three times x minus three times x plus seven. My goodness. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten factors of f of x. And we're going to to set each of them equal to zero. So x equals zero, x equals zero, x equals zero, x equals zero, that's four, x equals zero, x equals zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, x equals zero, x minus three equals zero, x minus three equals zero, and X plus seven equals zero. Well, these have already solved themselves. One of our zeros is zero. So zero has multiplicity
seven. It occurs seven times. And over here, x minus three equals zero. We add three to both sides, so x equals three. And the same thing over here, x equals three. So three has multiplicity. Two and x plus seven equals zero. I subtract seven from both sides. X equals negative seven. Negative seven has multiplicity. I'm tired of writing that word. One. So this problem has seven plus two plus one zeros. Actually, it has one zero which is zero. It has one zero, which is two, and it has one zero, which is negative seven. So the zeros are zero, the number zero, two, and negative seven. But zero has multiplicity seven, Two has multiplicity. No, that's three. That's multiplicity two, it's three. So, uh, no, let me change that. Three has multiplicity two, and negative seven has multiplicity one. Now that was an awful lot of writing to have to go to. Probably you can see here that it would be enough to set x equal to zero and know from that power that seven that x will occur uh, seven times. So x equals zero will occur seven times. So you can just actually look at the power and say, okay, the multiplicity is seven. And here, x minus three is squared, but you'll have x minus three times x minus three. They each are set equal to zero. You'll get positive three. X equals positive three. That's one of your zeros, but this power can tell you how many times it occurs. Multiplicity two. And over here, um, X is going to equal negative seven. And that's to the invisible one power. That's a one, believe it or not. Well, try it again, Barbara. x plus seven to the invisible one power. So you know that x is going to equal negative seven and it will have multiplicity one. And that's the much shorter way to do this. You could have started from the very beginning this would have been an x to the seventh power and figured out what all the zeros are, but that would be mind killing. Well, there's an easier way all the way around, however, to find the zeros of functions. 
which means you find the x-intercepts. I doubt that there are 10 x-intercepts, but you never know. We could graph it if we cared enough and we'd find out. Okay. We're going to use a new method. New method to you, maybe a new method to you. Called synthetic division. To find out if negative five is a zero and if three is a zero and or if three is a zero of f of x. So watch what I do. In a minute. OK, we've got f of x. And that equals 2x to the third plus 7x squared minus 11x plus, excuse me, 20. Now, watch what I do next. This is kind of like matrices, but not anywhere near as hard. I'm going to use just the coefficients. 2, 7, negative 11, and 20. And then I'm going to make this interesting symbol, which looks like a backward L or a backwards box. And I'm gonna take the first number there, negative five, and put it in the backwards box or bottom part of a box, or backwards L. Then I'm going to be writing numbers underneath these numbers. So I'm going to skip a line, and then I'm going to draw a line. That's an equals bar. And now I'm going to start using synthetic division which is so easy. Here we go. Now, let me tell you first that the last number we get will determine whether or not negative five is a zero of f of x. If this number is a zero, the negative five will be a zero of f of x. If it's any number other than zero, the negative five is not a zero of f of x. So here we go. Here are the coefficients. The very first one always, when you're doing synthetic division, always comes right down and you write it there. Then, you take this number and you multiply, let's put this symbol, for multiply. You multiply 2 times negative 5. Well, that's negative 10, and you write negative 10 under 7. And let me get rid of that little dashy mark. There. Then what you do is you add. 
you add these two numbers together. 7 plus negative 10 is negative 3. I'm going slow so that if anybody is writing, you can, um, you know, you can catch up or you will not get behind. Now we're going to take negative three and we're going to multiply it by negative five. So here I'll put my, my multiplication sign in there. Negative three times negative five is positive 15. And then I add negative 11 plus 15 is four. And then I take four and I multiply it by negative five. Four times negative five is negative 20. And I write it underneath the last co uh, the, the constant right there. And I add 20 plus negative 20 and doggone it, I get a zero. And this means celebrate. Because we now have two bits of information that we need about f of x, we know that negative five is a zero of f of x and that negative five comma zero in parentheses is an X intercept. What is that? What is that? Intercept. I don't have room for the T. Nasty thing. Okay. Fine. See if I care. I'll just do it this way. X intercept. And that is quicker than trying to factor it, but you would not be able to factor it. Actually, you probably could, but you'd have to learn about the difference of cubes or the sum of cubes, and we just don't bother to teach that here. If you have to know it in calculus, you'll learn it. For your information, because you will be asked in the homework, this down here, this thing, 2, negative 3, and 4, is the quotient. The answer you get when you divide, because we just divided. It's kind of a strange way to divide. That 0 is the remainder. And we started out with two being the coefficient of x to the third. After you do a uh, synthetic division, this two is now the coefficient of one power lower x squared. So what your quotient is, is 
2x squared, and then you go downhill with the degree of every term. Minus 3x, 4 is positive, so plus 4. That's your quotient. Often that's called Q of X. And often the remainder is called R of X. It depends on who writes the homework problem. Let's do it again. Okay. I'm going to do this again. This time with three, that's the other number we have to check. So I'm going to use the same setup here. We're going to have two, excuse me. We're going to have two, seven, negative 11, and 20. And we're going to put three out here in the backwards L. And we're going to do synthetic division again. Skip a line, draw a line. Now two comes directly down. And you multiply two times the number in the box. I'm going to call it a box. Two times three is six. Put it under the seven, the next number. I add vertically, I'll get a 13. I take 13 and I multiply by three. Uh, three times 13 is 39. Negative 11 plus 39 is 28. And we can already tell, right? When I add three times 28 to 20, that is not gonna be zero, but let's do it. Let's play the game. 3 times 28. I've got a calculator right here. Oh well, 84. Let's see if I was right. 3 times 28. Enter. Yeah, all right. So this is 84. 28 times 3 is 84. I write it here. 20 plus 84 is 104. So 3 is not a 0 of f of x. However, there is a quotient and there is a remainder. This started out being 2x to the third. So when I'm done, I've got 2x squared plus 13x plus 28, that's my quotient, and my remainder is 104. Now, many of you have done this before, and you know that another way of writing this is that uh, Q of X equals the quotient is 2X squared plus 13X plus 28 plus 104 over over what exactly? Over the factor that three is a part of. 
So we haven't really gotten that far yet, but if three is a number, then the factor you would make from that is x minus three. So this would be over x minus three. However, in this book, they almost never do that. They just ask for the quotient and they ask for the remainder and they don't ask you to do funny stuff, unless I'm wrong, with this. So most of the time, you won't have to do this. Thank goodness. Aha, now here, here we're being asked to find, let me make it smaller so it's more readable. We have x to the third minus two x squared minus three. We're going to divide it by x plus two, but we're going to use synthetic division to do it. Oh goodness. Yes, but we can do this. And we're being asked to find the quotient and the remainder. So I'm going to write this more clearly. X to the third minus two X squared minus three divided by x plus 2. All right, now we have to have a hard talk about algebra. We're going to pay attention to this first. x to the third minus 2x squared minus 3. What I see immediately is that this is a cubic function. OK, X to the third minus two X squared minus three is cubic. There's a formula for cubic functions that's very, very similar to the formula for quadratic functions, okay? So the formula is f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Because we're starting with a three, we go down to two, we go down to one, and then we have the constant at the end. So let's write this in this form. F of X equals negative two X cubed minus three X, ah, ah, minus two X squared. No, 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 I missed it completely. No, 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 let's just get rid of the whole thing. Get rid of the whole thing. Okay. That's one X cubed minus two X squared. Where's the X term? There is no X term, oh dear. We can't go on, we have to quit. No, you don't get it. It's not that easy. You can't quit that easily. We're just gonna have to put in a placeholder, just like you do in matrices. Plus zero X. Now there's not a crisis. Yay! I know that I can write my synthetic this way, synthetic division this way now. One 
negative two, zero, negative three. And then I come over here and I put a number in there, but what do I put? They didn't give me a number. They gave me X plus two. There's another crisis. <coughs> You're going to have to learn something new. <coughs> Take X plus two. Let's see, where can I put that where it's readily visible? I'm going to put it up here. X plus two. I'm not going to put that in there. What I am going to do is take X plus two and set it equal to zero and solve for X. Subtract two, subtract two. So X equals negative two. That's the number I put here. And this now is my synthetic division. Let me put a little circle around this. It's not a circle, it's something though. We're gonna now do synthetic division. And we're not looking to come up with a zero. We are looking to come up with a remainder. And a quotient. All right, so let's just do this. I bring down the one. And I write it right here. Then I multiply, I don't want to write all those arrows, it makes it, you know, it could be confusing. One times negative two is negative two. Then I add negative two plus negative two is negative four. Negative four times negative two is positive eight. Zero plus eight is eight. Eight times negative two is negative sixteen. Negative three plus negative sixteen is negative nineteen. Let me make sure I did that right. Negative four times negative two is positive eight. Zero plus eight is eight. Eight times negative two is negative 16. Okay, and that is negative 19. Now I just have to come up with the X's for my quotient. We started out with one, which was the coefficient of X cubed. And that means that now, one is the coefficient of x squared. Negative four becomes minus four x, and positive eight becomes plus eight. So your quotient is x squared, you wouldn't actually write the one, x squared minus 4x plus 8, that's the quotient. And negative 19 is the remainder. And there you go. All we were asked to do is use synthetic division to find the quotient and the remainder. So what did we learn in this problem? 
we learned about we learned about um, using placeholders and translating a factor or a binomial, that's better. Translating a binomial. The actual name for this is divisor. A binomial divisor. It's actually a linear binomial divisor, but I mean, how many words do you want to use? Translating a, a, a binomial divisor. Two, a, uh, two, that's a two, a uh, number. Because we had to change x plus two to negative two. And we did that by setting x plus two equal to zero so that we could see that x equals negative two. And that's what we put in the backwards L right there. And we get to do it again. Here we've got, let's be correct here, a linear, that means the highest power is one, linear binomial divisor, just in case some other math teacher is looking at this and wants me to be absolutely correct. God forbid I shouldn't be absolutely correct. X minus two equals zero, and what that means is I add two to both sides so that I get X equals two. And that's what we'll put in the backwards L. Now this, this is going to be a honey. Let's write the formula for a fifth degree polynomial. Here we go. F of X equals A x to the fifth plus b x to the fourth plus c x to the third cubed plus d x squared plus e x and we're not going to say f because we've already used it plus G, no, G is used too often too, plus G, H, I, J, K. How about K? Let's call it K. There. Now let's match up these terms with these. One, x to the fifth plus one x cubed minus one. And the rest all must have 
placeholders. You got to do it. So plus zero times x to the fourth plus zero times x squared plus zero times x, which is really x to the one. Now we can do our division. Okay. One, zero, one, zero, zero, negative one. With positive two in the backwards L. I skip a line and draw a line. So here we go. Bring down the one. One times two is two. Zero plus two is two. Two times two is four. One plus four is five. Five times two is 10. Zero plus 10 is 10. 10 times two is 20. Zero plus 20 is 20. 20 times two is 40. And 40 minus one is 39. <sighs> okay, this was one X to the fifth. So after we do synthetic division, we get one X to the fourth. And now we're going to go downhill. Look at all these numbers are positive. So plus two X cubed plus five X squared plus 10 X to the one, but I don't write the one plus 20. This is my quotient. And my remainder is 39. Now let me make sure here. Okay, we have 1x to the fifth, 1x to the third, minus one. So we're gonna have a placeholder here, and a placeholder here, and a placeholder here, and negative one here. And I brought down the one, and yes, this, this was x equals two. This is x equals two, right there. So one times two is two, two times two is four, one plus four is five, five times two is 10, zero plus 10 is 10, 10 times two is 20, zero plus 20 is 20, 20 times two is 40, negative one plus 40 is 39. Yes, this is correct. Remain D. No, it's not. Remain Dur now. This is a perfect example of everything you need to know. We haven't learned everything to know about synthetic division. It has some other uses, but for what we're going to do, 
this is what we're going to be doing with synthetic division. Okay, questions about this. You're bound to have them. Sometimes you're given the numbers, just as numbers, the divisors, just as numbers, but sometimes you're given them as factors, then you have to set that divisor equal to zero and solve for X in order to use synthetic division. This is the only type of polynomial that you can use synthetic division with. If it were X squared or something, you couldn't do it. You would have to do long, long division, polynomial long division, which, you know, what, you can build up speed with that, but it is harder. It is more difficult than what we're doing here. That was fun. <laughs>